In this video, we'll be making connections between kinetic energy and kinematics. Let's use an example of penguins to see what I mean. So, an aquarium trainer wants to teach three young penguins how to slide. This will allow them to escape predators. So we have Anna, who's 15 kgs, Bert, who's 10 kgs, and Corinne, whose mass is 5 kgs. They are initially at rest and the trainer pushes them each with a force of 100 newtons. First, let's rank the penguins according to their kinetic energy after the trainer pushes each with 100 newtons over the same distance. Which penguin will have the least kinetic energy? In this case, all penguins have the same kinetic energy. Why? They are initially at rest so we set the initial kinetic energy and initial position to zero. Each penguin gets a push of 100 newtons. So the same amount of force is used. They also travel the same distance. If we use the work kinetic energy theorem, we can see this. Work is equal to force times distance. We have the same force and the same distance and hence the same work. According to the work kinetic energy theorem, work done on the penguins is equal to their kinetic energy. Hence, the change in kinetic energy is the same for all penguins. In the next question, we are looking for the speed after the trainer has pushed each penguin with 100 newtons. Which penguin will be the fastest? Corinne is the fastest. Why? We need to think mathematically and return to the work kinetic energy theorem. We have W equals change in K, where W is equal to force times distance and kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared, where v is velocity. And since we have already established that all penguins have the same kinetic energy, we can say that work is equal to kinetic energy or F times D is equal to half mv squared. And then we solve for velocity. We can see mass is in the denominator. This means mass would be a big factor in determining speed. This is because when we have a big number in the denominator, we get a small number back. When we have a small number in the de denominator, we get a big number back. It's helpful to remember this not only for physics, but also for math courses. 1 over big is small and 1 over small is equal to big. We are going to keep this here as we answer the question. We also have the masses MA for Anna, MB for Bert, MC for Corinne. Let's assume that the displacement will be 2 meters. This is just a random number, so you can put any other number, but the result would be the same at the end. And we also have 100 newtons for the force, so this number stays the same. Go ahead and plug all numbers in the variables and you should get this. Corinne has the highest speed, so when she is pushed, she slides the fastest. The smaller the mass, the faster the speed. Here is the last question. Rank the penguins according to their kinetic energy after their trainer has pushed each with 100 newtons for 5 seconds. This question is different than the first part because now we involve time instead of distance. In the first question, the penguins had the same kinetic energy because the same amount of work was done on them, according to force times distance. Now we don't know anything about the distance pushed, so we know that their kinetic energy will be different. Masses are also different, which means different accelerations, different final speeds, and different kinetic energies. We will need to somehow relate kinetic energy with kinematics. We are dealing with time here, so we can start with this kinematic equation. V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. We will need to think about this mathematically again. What can we do with this equation? We can first simplify it. We know the penguins start from rest we can get rid of the initial velocity. Let's see what we now have. 
We don't have acceleration, but we know the force on each penguin and their masses. Force and mass should now remind you of Newton's second law. This is what we will be using to express acceleration a which will be equal to f over m according to Newton's second law. We can relate this to the kinematics equation and we can do this by substitution. We still need to relate it to the kinetic energy. We know kinetic energy is equal to k is equal to half mv squared which is what we are going to aim for. We need to do some steps so be sure to follow along. We want the equation half mv squared. We need to square both sides on our equation. Multiply both sides by half m to get the half m as in the kinetic energy equation. We get the kinetic energy equation now. The purpose for doing this was to obtain an expression for kinetic energy that uses force, time and mass which are the variables available to us as of now. Because we have half mv squared on the other side, we can say that this is kinetic energy. Given this new equation, which penguin will have the largest kinetic energy? So to get the answers, simply plug the known values into the variables and we get 40 joules for Corinne, 20 joules for Bert and 13.3 joules for Anna. So the penguin with the smallest mass will have the largest kinetic energy.